Welcome to ICANN TV. My name is Kevin Papier. I'm your host for the day and I would like to introduce you to our special guest who is going to talk about trauma and how to deal with it. Our first guest, Mr. Rodney Milan, would you be able to share your interest as well as introduce yourself to the audience? Good day. I'm Rodney Milan. I'm a formal debriefer in the South African Police, also a chaplain. And yes, we will chat about trauma. Trauma is actually an incident that takes place in somebody's life. And usually there's strategy, strategy, strategy involved. And what happens is that the certain steps to deal with a specific yes. strategy and how to overcome it. Yep. This overcoming usually takes place over a period of time depending on the specific tragedy that occurred. Okay. You understand? So trauma is something that you speak about. Yes. So that something that was abnormal yep. becomes normal. Okay. And to do that, you have to assess it first and then deal with different steps to over or how to overcome or just deal with it in the everyday day of life. Thank you. We also have our guest, uh, another guest in our, in our studio who, who actually dealt with Tom. Would you be able to introduce it up and explain your story in brief? Thank you. Hello um, everyone. I'm Sunita van der Westerden. I'm 21 years old. I live in Cravenby and um, I grew up in Priscan in Northern Cape. Um, by my grand ma and my grand pa. Yes, okay. In 2009, I lost my grandfather. And in 2010, I lost my grandmother. Oh, okay. And that was... Yes. Okay, we're gonna go. Welcome back. You have now have a glimpse of Janita's story. We have, uh, we also have another guest in our studio today. Would you be able to um, introduce yourself and tell you in this discuss a brief discussion about about your situation? Hi, good day. My name is Rudolf Prince. I'm Welcome from me. Cape Town in Elsie's River. And a year ago, I lost my wife. Oh. And she passed away. I've got a father of four children. Okay. And I'm sitting now at the moment with my little baby of three years old, which my wife has never got to see her wow. year to, since year and a half. She's never get to see her little baby grow, getting older to two years old. Wow. So, um, we, we also have our counselor in the city, as you guys well know. We're now going to go to our counselor to discuss more or less how he see how to deal with all this trauma. Well, I got our guess. Okay, um, Rudolf, let me explain to you and Sunita. There's no different trauma. Trauma is trauma. But there is ways of dealing with specific traumas. For instance, if you are somebody or you have lost a loved one through a tragic, tragic death, like an accident or a shooting incident or something like that, then we deal with the trauma by making the abnormality normal. And the only way to make the abnormality normal is to speak about it. Because what happens sometimes we don't speak about it, we crop it up inside and, and it's everything goes, everything I put away and I want to keep it one side, later on it gets rotten and when it comes out it is worse than what it was. So what do we do? We speak about these things to make it normal. Would you be able Ms. Lan, explain to us the three or, or the different stages that we, we have to do? There's about seven stages Kevin, Rudolf Sonita, there's about seven stages. Now the first stage is to assess. And the only way to assess is when a person is ready to speak. Mm. So what happens? The debrief or counsellor asks certain questions. Now, it is called open-ended questions. Now, if you don't understand why I'm saying open-ended, it is those questions that usually your insurance broker asks you that needs answers. Rudolf, have you been able to ask these questions to yourself and, and, and to your colleagues or family about your situation. How do you feel about that? Interacting with family and... Okay, can I just give you this brief description? Yes, you may. Uh, yes, you may. 
during the, uh, the the illness of my wife, she had cancer. Yeah. So during that time, she I had like obstacles coming from both sides of both families. Yes, yes. Myself and my wife, and who blamed me for cancer yeah. for the cancer she had. And no one actually knew it was like an aggressive cancer. So what happened is, it's been only diagnosed after yes. like a year, okay. and then it was too late. Wow. In terms of interacting with families and friends, I can't say I have, but I have been. I've spoke to s uh, some of them. Mm -hmm. On uh, a question of interjection, do you think that you failed? in asking questions at most times? Most times I've been asking a lot of questions so I won't say I, I think I've failed. The, the problem with, with that is that to myself I failed, in my, I failed myself in okay. blaming yes. me. Yes. And yes, that, that, that's mostly what I can tell you in okay. terms of asking questions. Yeah. Mr. Milan, would you, would you be able to we go uh, back to Janita's Sunita story? Uh, would you just tell us a little bit about her situation? Just, just explain us more about that. I'll do that, but can I just yes, you say might. something on Rudolf? The reason Rudolf's situation is not always easy. Now, you've got to remember he's got more than one problem now. When I've listened, He's got the one problem where he's got to deal with a three-year-old three child that doesn't understand yeah. that his mother has died. Yeah. Then he's got to deal with a family who has put blame on him. Yeah. And of course, he's now got to also deal with being a single father. Yes, yeah, pretty hard on him. So, it's a long-term situation. There's three traumas involved into one yes. tragedy. Yes. So, it's a long-term situation. Yeah. So, with him, you will have to do some sessions. Yes. To first to get the one gone, deal with the one, then the other, and so it will fo follow on until there's healing. Yes. Because that's what's causing now the problem. He needs to be healed, but the healing comes from here. Yes. And the only way is, like I said before, is speaking about it, speaking about it until the abnormality becomes normal. Mm. But looking at Sunita, Sunita came into an environment. And if I learn, listen to what she has said. Now a lot of people doesn't understand it, but she came from a rural environment. Yeah. And a rural environment has got family values to the core. Yes. They are strict in family values. Now, when rural people usually come to Cape Town, they either lost it or they keep stay strong and stay on the correct path. Now she came into a family where there was drug abuse now yes. and for her it was completely different because she did not understand this and of course if you talk about it they blow the, 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 the smoke into your face. Do you, could you also say that age could be a contributing factor? Of course age is always a contributing yeah. factor but most problem, but mostly it is your, 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 the thing that your morals which you've got here and that when that morals comes to be to be to be absorbed or do something wrong with or they intervene with you with what your your, your grandfather and grandmother has taught you. Yes, yes. And you can speak to many people. Yes. Usually that is the correct stuff when your grandparents teach you. Yes. But when you come back into a different society and how you're sitting with a problem, I either join them or I do not join them. And if you do not join them, then you've got to stay strong. Um, I also have my own story to tell because I lost my son due to suicide and but the contributing factor was drugs and as a single father I had to raise them on my own but uh, after the suicide obviously um, it only hit me two years after and I thought I was strong but I wasn't and it is still it is still hurt, uh, hurt quite a lot uh, but it's getting better every day so Mr. Malan, would you, would you share some like in my situation, for instance, in that, in that case? Death, suicide, it is very much the same, but it is what happened before. As a parent, when you started with the suicide, when you started with, that, like you said before, the drugs, sometimes we act on it too harshly, 
and then we usually causes the child to find another outcome and usually that outcome is suicide but again you can do whatever you want to certain children just don't want to act differently because of they being addicted to it now mr Milan, there are three individuals with different circumstances different times different different issues how do you in, in your in your brief discussion could explain how do we deal with our situation as a whole first thing what you do is don't do anything that's abnormal like what you used to do and okay. some people go and bury themselves you know like we like the tortoise we pull our head in and we want to forget about what happened no you do what you did every day act normal you do what your normality is and don't go and drink every any medications and that because unless it's been be prescribed by a psychologist and um, then only you can use the medication but firstly let me say this do what you're supposed to do go on normal and when you're normal and like i said earlier speak about your problem mm -hmm. go and seek advice not like somebody they knew your friends and your family say no you're going to see a head doctor there's something wrong there's nothing wrong with seeing somebody because what happens the psychologist or the the, 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 the social worker whoever they do not heal you you are actually healing yourself but they allow you to speak like i said uh, to you the other day about a greek word called catharsis it is to open up so you open and you speak to them okay take a couple of sessions so that we take the abnormal out and become normal and then healing will take place gradually ladies and gentlemen you now heard three different stories and also the input of our counselor trauma is something with no one know how to handle me myself Rudolf and Janita, we in this situation, we have to live with the pain, we have to go and sleep with the pain, you have to wake up with that pain. And it's not, not easy. And for the normal pe person in the street, we don't know always how to, if we can open up to them. But for where I'm sitting here is three people, we can now in our own words describe how do we feel about ourselves as a person. And I will start with me. I feel whatever happened to me turned me into a much better person than I am today. Whatever happened drove me to do better things. My son's death is just a revelation. There is something else out there. He's gone to a better place. And now I will live his, or I will, I will, I will do his journey, his life journey for him with the help of others by talking to my friends and my family. And I trust people more now. So Rudolf, maybe you can share your, your input and how you feel. In terms of enlightenment, uh, I can actually helped me a lot. This was, I won't say my escape code, but this is my refuge. Mm. I found the refuge yes. here at the time where I was like down, I was like low up, and as Mr. Milan actually said, opening up, it helped me understand here that I needed to speak. Yes. I needed to be the encouragement others need. Yes. I needed to tell someone else how to find the inner strength. Yes. And at this moment, having this um, enlightenment from Mr. Milan as well, I feel much better thinking that all the steps that are most of the steps, not all, but most of the steps I've taken as well. Thank you. Janita, could you put an insight into your life and your experience now since we've met at the ICANN Center? And making this all happen because this is all all because of I can send to that it, but that this is possible with the help of our instructors our other students and also our counselor Mr. Rodney Milan could you share us your your input please it's emotional mm -hmm. I can say my I, I, I can agree so much with what Rudolf said about the I can send because I also got to know our students our fellow classmates our instructors the the visuals, the, the videos we've watched and also get to know the instructors on a personal level sort of share that uh, especially with our, our main instructor Imran which was, is a great inspiring for me in my life where he's been and where he's still going so um, for, for where Rudolf, in, in Rudolf your life 
also gave a new meaning to my life because I also struggled with things that you showed me. Also, Mr. Malan, who I also know in person, uh, um, shared that, that and shared that light and life on me. So, Mr. Malan, would you just be able to conclude, give us a conclusion on, on, on what we... I understand what you all go through. But when you all look at your own problems, you know that thing that we call intent respect. You go inside yourself, basically you look at your own problems and you lay it, lay it bare. And usually what we do is we um, write the little page and we ask where is our problems, what have we achieved. And we cancel out and then we sort of count them and we say that we've actually gone forward instead of backward. And that's the important part, where you're actually going, you know, because you need to realize that in life you have to go forward you cannot go back or you cannot like I said earlier do what a tortoise do go back into a shell and then lay there you need to go forward but you need to go forward healing yourself thank you Mr. Manon. I can center for the friendly staff for the management for the instructors this whole place is, is our home this is where we come together and to share. It is not just about learning about camera work and, and how to make a video, but this is all about life. So thank you so much, I can say. With this, we would have never been able to do this without you guys. And we thank you so much. And yet again and again to all our colleagues, our classmates, we are not friends anymore. We are now family and we all love you so dearly. So thank you so much.